Hey folks, Michael here with Primal Edge and Leatherworks. New projects, new space, new tools. I got a lot of stuff to cover with you today, so stick around. All right, guys, well, some of you may notice that I am in a little bit of a different place today than I usually am, and that's for a good reason. Um, business has been really good lately, and I really have to thank all you guys who've been reaching out to me for buying knives. Um, got a couple of guys out there that have uh, made some custom orders for hiking staves, and also, surprisingly, sheaths and leather work. Um, I really wasn't expecting to be doing any sheath work independent from my knife builds this, this early on. But a few of you have reached out to me. You've had knives that need need a little bit of you know TLC cleanup and that type of thing. You want a new sheath. You want the blade clean. Maybe it's a favorite knife or something you've had. It's been passed down. Um, and uh, you guys have reached out to me and asked me to help you you know breathe some new life into them. And I really appreciate that. I actually like tool restoration of all kinds, not just knives. Most of the video footage that I shoot that's in the house, it's not outside or in the shop is done upstairs in my hobby room and that's where I do a lot of my leather work and to be honest it's worked pretty well so far but it's really I'm, I'm, I'm outgrowing that space the room I'm in is actually a converted garage back in the 70s it was turned into a den and it's been that way ever since but it doesn't fit my family size and my family dynamic so we hardly ever use this room and a few months ago when we got a flood around here it actually got pretty high and got in here what I had to do was take up all the carpet. We even had some damage to some furniture that was in here, and it all had to go. Once I had the room gutted and cleaned out, I took a look at the space, and my sister came by, and she looked at it, and we were talking about what I was going to do with the room. She had the idea of converting it over into the leather shop because I'd been wanting to move it and needed a bigger space, and it's perfect. This is about three times the size of the space that I'm using upstairs. I mean, it's a really good-sized room. I've got this section right here where I'm going to be putting uh, an eight foot bench, which is going to have plenty of room. I like a big workspace like that. It's going to be about eight foot long and it's going to be about 30 inches deep. So a pretty fairly good size bench. I'm fortunate enough to be in a family home. This was this home belonged to my mother and father. They bought it new and I'm the second generation in this house, owning this house. My children are the third generation living in this house. And to me, that's pretty cool. Um, a lot of the work was done in this room was done by my father. In fact, this piece of furniture right here was an entertainment center he built back in the 80s. It's definitely seen better days, but it fits the rustic decor that I'm going for in this room. I've put up here some of uh, the tools, some, that, uh, some of which you know, are hand-me-downs from the family, some of which I acquired at you know, various estate sales and whatnot. And you know, I've got it laid out pretty well. I've got my books over here. I've got some books on this side, and you know, all of them kind of fall under the uh, the bushcraft outdoorsman type of uh, genre. They're either reference materials, they're uh, you know, educational books, informational books, or just outright entertainment. Uh, the fireplace over here. This was built by my grandfather, and it's really cool to 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 be able to utilize this room in in a different and unique way. Regarding some of the other projects that I've got going on. Um, I'm working on another scout model uh, knife for an individual. This one is a little bit, going to be a little bit unique. It's going to be a, a tactical take on a traditional knife and more on that in another video. But uh, in this one, I want to talk about a couple of things that I've got going on. Recently, I went to a friend's house and returned to him a knife that I had restored and built a new sheath on. He was really happy with the work and when he left he gave me something and said take this and, and see what you can do with it. And I'm a little excited about that project. I'm actually going to wait to show you that one last. The other thing that I have going on is um, over here, let me go get it, right here. A friend of mine, Christopher Golosi at Christopher Golosi LLC, he has a YouTube channel and I'll put the link to that down in the description below. He uh, was up north a few months ago, and he found this axe at, and I believe it was a, a, a flea market. I'm not sure exactly where he got it. I can't find any markings on it, and I can't find anything to try to indicate as to what kind of axe this is. It's a pr pretty good size axe. It's not as large as the plum up here that I got that I restored recently, but it is a good size axe. It's got some kind of epoxy that's been put up here, and it does look like it, it, it was original to the axe. 
The head still seems to be on fairly well. The axe has uh, some kind of varnish on here that I don't like. I'm going to take that off. I'm not going to rehang it. It's okay for me the way it is. I like it. I'm not going to complain about it. What I am going to do is clean the head off really well, get rid of some of this really, really bad mushrooming, um, but pretty much leave it as is. I want to clean it as best I can, uh, uh, sharpen it up, and make a sheath for it. So that's one project that I've got going on. Knives. Now I've got a few here. This is one that I had as a child. This is just some knife made in China. There's nothing special about it. Uh, it's got a plastic handle on it. It's just something I had ran across in doing some cleaning in the house. Um, I'll probably clean this one up, make a you know simple sheath for it, and I might even swap up the handle and do something a little bit more unique with the handle. Again, it's just a, a cheapo knife. There's nothing fancy about it. In fact, you can look here, and the grind is way, way off. Uh, the Ricasa is real uneven on that knife. Um, I've got this one that came from the individual that has the final product I'll show you in a minute. Uh, they found this in their yard, if you can imagine that. Nothing's really wrong with it. It just needs to be cleaned up. Again, this is uh, this says Tomahawk XL-217 stainless steel, another China product. But they found it in this sheath, and the sheath definitely does not go with this knife. Uh, so I'm going to clean the knife up, and I'm going to polish it back to new and build them a better sheath for it. These are other two knives that I've had that have just been around forever and a day. This one is, uh, what does it say on here? You can barely read it. I, I, can't, I can't read it, but uh, it's, a, it's made in America. It's an old knife. I'm not going to do much to this knife. I'm just going to kind of clean it up a little bit, maybe sharpen it, and make a sheath for it. Um, the, uh, the guard here is bent a little bit, so I'm going to try to straighten that out as well, and I'm going to leave it intact. This one looks like a pretty old knife, and I, and I don't want to do a lot to it. And it's in, For its age, it's in really good shape. The last one I've got is this one here. Uh, this one has been completely beat to heck. Uh, you know, it, it, this one is a Schrade, uh, New York, USA. This has just been, it's just been beat. I'm going to do a close up. The sheath is, you know, beat pretty bad. And this is bent. That's not supposed to be that way. Uh, it's just all beat up over here, and the edges, there's pretty much no edge on it, and, uh, you know, it's got some loose areas right here, and it's all kind of beat up. I don't want to do too much to this knife. I just kind of want to tidy it up, so to speak. Not going to do a lot of restoration on this one. This is a really old knife, and I don't want to do too much to it. The last one I'm really excited about, and I think you guys might be too... That is this one. And that is this. This was something that he had hanging in his barn, and it is awesome. It's definitely pitted up and rusted. Whoever owned it before he did went through and hit it with some red paint, I guess, in an attempt to try to stop the rusting. I'm not really sure. The handle is all beat to hell. Uh, they tried to repair it with a new Chicago screw right here because it definitely doesn't match the rest of them. Um, it, it's it's rusted up. What he wants to do is kind of, you know, rebuild it. Um, this is not something that's going to get used on a regular basis, so we're not really wor worried about getting it ready for the farm for tooling. Uh, this is something he's going to hang up. He wants a new handle put on, obviously. This one is they tried to fix it with hockey tape. Uh, but he actually even wants to kind of rework the handle style a little bit, uh, something a little more comfortable, which I'm going to mess with that. And probably replace this. All this has to be polished and, and, and get the rust off of it. This is going to be a fun project. I'm really going to enjoy this one. But what I need from you guys is to, out of the three things I've got going, what are you most interested in seeing first? Now, whichever one you, you want to see me restore or clean up, that's the one that's the one that I'll do a full video on and by full video I'm not talking a 30 minute video I'm gonna keep the time down on it but I'm gonna give you a beginning to end video of you know showing you what I'm doing but I want to spotlight one of these restorations and really do you know maybe a 10 to 15 minute video solid 15 minute video 
<clears throat> of what's going on in the build and what I'm doing, and even maybe you do some narration. The other ones are going to be more like movies, no talking, more working. But you tell me. Let me know in the comments below. Do you want to see me restore the saw, the axe, or the knives? Uh, I'm going to be doing some retooling. I have... I'm not going to go into the details on what I'm getting just yet. There's a few things that I need to pick up that's going to help me kind of... And I'm, I know I'm opening myself up right now. This is going to br bring me in the, what I feel to be the next level of, of crafting the knives and other tools and stuff that I'm working on. So what do I mean by that? I'm a little reluctant to talk about this because I know that there's going to be some people out there that have a definite opinion about what I'm, you know, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, I have, in my opinion, gone as far as I could go with the tools that I have. Now, right now there's a bunch of people cracking their knuckles, pulling out their keyboards, and getting ready to bash me in the comments for what I've just said and what I'm about to say. Let me just give you a little heads up. So calm down, push, push stuff away from the keyboard, and listen to me for a minute. I know that I could go out there, grab a bastard file off the shelf, grab a piece of steel from the, from the store, and come over here, clamp it down on my, on my bench right here, and grind out a nice knife. I know that I could do that. I'm not talking about owning the tools that will allow me to produce the product. I'm going a step further. I want to own the tools that are going to allow me to produce the same quality or even higher quality product at a much more efficient rate. I don't care how awesome sauce you think you are. I don't care how Billy Badass you think you are. If you're going to take a bastard file and I'm going to go to somebody like a, a, a Turley or Adventure Swan or one of those other guys and I'm going to let them use their, their equipment and their tools and their machine and I'm going to say go. I'm going to bet you dollars to pesos that the guy with the power tools in the other room is going to finish a little bit faster than you. And the name of this game, for me anyway, is to, make, to have a business, a viable business. And I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about wh what knife makers do, uh, how they charge, how they're overcharging, they're just raping the, raping the customers because anybody can make a knife. And I've heard all these arguments and listened to it till, I, till it made my ears bleed listening to it. And the fact of the matter is that, yes, anyone can make a knife. I have videos on my website, on my, on my YouTube channel, showing you how I do it. They're not how-to videos. I don't mess around with the how-to videos. It's a how I do video because I'm not always right, but I get the job done and I've got the receipts to prove it. Um, you guys like what I'm making. You enjoy the products that I'm delivering to you and I'm getting nothing but praises from it so far. I'm much better today than I was a year ago and twice as good as I was two years ago. And as I improve, I get better tools. I get better equipment. And I think some of the equipment that I need to buy, that I need to invest in myself and in this company in is necessary for me to make this viable. So I'm not knocking anybody that sits on his desk on a Sunday afternoon watching a football game with his little bastard file and grinding out a knife. And I'm not saying that, you know, that's Superman and I'm just some lazy guy grinding out knives over here because that's kind of how some people feel. In order for me to make any money at this so that I can continue to make knives and I continue to feed the three kids that I have and pay for the mortgage on the house and pay the insurance and everything else, I kind of have to produce more than one knife a month or one knife you know, a week or whatever the case may be. I need to produce enough to start selling. I need to make enough sheaths to start selling. I need to do enough of whatever it is I'm working on to be able to generate the income. And, you know, there are people out there that can, that can argue up, down, right, and left about what equipment you do need and what equipment you don't need. The bottom line is you have to be efficient in what you do. If it doesn't make any sense, it ain't going to make any dollars. So when I see me sitting there busting my hump on antiquated equipment that's not letting me finish my product at an acceptable speed and at an acceptable rate, I'm outdated. Now, I'm not willing to sacrifice quality for speed which is why, again, I need to have better equipment. So there is going to be some retooling in the knife shop that's going to hopefully help me do two things. It's going to help me get the product out faster, and it's going to help me be even more accurate. And that's the name of the game. I want, I want things to be more accurate. I want things to be more pristine, more clean, more sharp, uh, no pun intended, and, and done at a more acceptable rate. Getting better equipment is going to help me be more consistent in my overall delivery of a quality product. That's what I'm going for and that's what I want. 
Um, so some of you guys out there who have made more than one comment about you know how they like the way I do things, I'm not deviating from that. I'm trying to be able to replicate that at a much more acceptable rate. That's going to let me get my product out to the two, three, four, five, and ten people that are making a request. So I've got some new tools coming. I don't want to tell you what they are. I want to get them in, get them set up, and get everything going before I go in, go down that road and start uh, uh, introducing that stuff out there. But be on the lookout for some really interesting changes. Um, lastly, the forge getting really close to being done. Um, I'm ready to start, you know, smashing out some uh, hand forged items. You know, uh, strikers uh, for flint and steel, knives, hand forged knives, um, all that great stuff. So really going to have some fun stuff showing here uh, very, very soon. Um, appreciate you guys sticking around. I know this is kind of a long-winded video, nothing too thrilling and exciting. I really want you, again, to tell me down below which project you want me to see spotlighting first. Do you want, to, do you want me to spotlight the axe? Do you want me to spotlight the saw or the knives? So let me know in the comments below, and I'll be sure that that's the next thing that I spotlight um, uh, for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos if you haven't already done so. Again, I appreciate your support. Pop over to the website. All the links are going to be in the description below if you're mobile. They're going to be on the screen if you're sitting at your desktop. Just click right on them. It'll take you to the website, take you to the email sign up. That's a great way to come up to some, you know, to, to, to stay in touch with me too, because whenever I have special offers, if you're on that email sign up, you're going to be the first guy to get it to get an email to, to know what's coming up. Sometimes you can jump at it before everybody else. The weather's changing, leaves are changing color, it's getting cold, it's time to go outside and play. So please do me a favor, be safe while you're out there, and I'll see you in the woods.